Welcome again to Camp Hope AB Church, located 114 Camp Hope Church Road, Macon, Georgia 31211. It's another Wednesday where we come out and to study, to show ourselves approval. Workmen need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. And you know our motto, come grow with us as we transform our thoughts, our words, and our deeds to prepare for Christ's return. We are going to be studying today Deuteronomy chapter 3. Deuteronomy chapter 3. So I pray that you get your Bibles out. Amen. And turn to Deuteronomy chapter 3. While you're doing that, allow me to go into prayer. God, we just thank you. We praise you. We glorify you for being you. Lord, we are coming to study, Lord. Study that we might be the light. We might be the wisdom. We might be the understanding. We might be the word. We might be the knowledge. We might be your witnesses to those who you sent out for us to make disciples, Lord. So, Lord, we ask that you would allow the Holy Spirit to teach us, to empower us, to give us understanding, give us revelations, give us all we need in order that we might sharpen our tools, that we might be what you would have us to be when we go out among your people. Lord, we just thank you for being you. And if we've done anything in thought, word, and deed that would hinder you from allowing this to be done, we ask that you forgive us. Cover us in the blood of Jesus. Cover us in the sacrifices you have made for us. We thank you. We praise you. Be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 3. Deuteronomy chapter 3. Let us read. Next we turned and went up along the road towards Bashan. And Og, king of Bashan, with his whole army, marched out to meet us in battle at Edri. The Lord said to me, do not be afraid of him, for I have delivered him into your hands, along with his whole army and his land. Do not, excuse me, do to him what you did to Shion, king of the Amorite, who reigned in Heshbon. So the Lord our God also gave into our hands all the king of Bashan and all his army. We struck them down, leaving no survivors. At that time, we took all his cities. There was not one of the 60 cities that we did not take from them. The whole reign of our God, Og's kingdom in Bashan. All these cities were fortified with high walls and with gates and bars, and there were also a great many unwelled valleys. We completely destroyed them as we had done with Shion, king of Heshbon, destroying every city, men, women, and children. But all the livestock and the plunder from their cities we carried off for ourselves. So at that time, we took from these two kings of, Am of the Amorites, the territory east of Jordan from the, from the Arnon Gorge, as far as Mount he Her Hermon. Hermon is called Shiron by the Shedonites, excuse me, by the Shedonans, the Amorites call Shinet Shinar. We took all the towns on the plateau and all Gilead and all Bashan as far as Sel Selkai and Ederai, towns of Org's kingdom in Bashan. Or king of Bashan was the last of the Rephronites. His bed was decorated with iron and was more than nine cubits long and four cubits wide. It is still in Rabbah of the Amorites. Of the land that we took over at that time, I gave the uh, Reubenites and the Gadites the territory north of Arior by the Arnon, George, in including half of the hill country of Gilead together with his towns. The rest of Gilead and also all Bashan, the king of Org, I gave 
the half tribe of Manasseh. The whole reign of our God in Bashan used to be known as the land of Riphatites. Jair, a descendant of Manasseh, took the whole region of our God as far as the border of Gasherites and the Maacathites. Ma 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 it was named after him so that to this day, Bashan is called Havilah, Jair. And I gave Gilead to Markai. But the Reubenite and the Gadites, I gave the territory extending from Gilead down to Aranon's Gorge, the middle of the gorge being the border, and out of Jabbok River, which is the border of the Amorites. Its, west, its western border was the Jordan in Arabah and Kinareth of the Sea of Arabah, Arabah that is the Dead Sea, below the slopes of Pisgah. I commanded you at that time, the Lord your God has given you this land to take possession of it. But all your able-bodied men armed for battle must cross over ahead of the other Israelites. However, your wives, your children, and your livestock, I know you have much livestock, may stay in the town I have given you until the Lord gives rest to your fellow Israelites as he has to you. And they too, and they too have taken over the land that the Lord your God has given them across the Jordan. After that, each of you may go back to your possession I have given you. At that time, I commanded Joshua, you have seen with your own eyes all that the Lord your God has done to these two kings. The Lord will do the same to all the kingdoms over there where you are going. Do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God himself will fight for you. At that time, I pleaded with the Lord. Sovereign Lord, you have begun to show to your servants your greatness and your strong hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do the deeds and mighty works you do? Let me go over and see the good land beyond the Jordan, that fine hill country and Lebanon. But because of you, the Lord was angry with me and would not listen to me. That is enough, the Lord said. Do not speak to me anymore about this matter. Go up to the top of Pisgah and look west and north and south and east. Look at the land with your own eyes, since you are not going to cross this Jordan. But commission Joshua and encourage and strengthen him, for he will lead this people across and will cause them to inherit the land that you will see. So stay in the valley near Beth Bori. Beth Bori. I read for you Deuteronomy chapter 3, verses 1 through 27, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. And y'all have to excuse me. Amen. I know I murdered some of those names. Amen. So I pray that as you would go, you would look up and get those uh, proper pronunciations. But let's go. Deuteronomy chapter 3. Now we must remember what is happening here. Moses is remembering all of the situations and circumstances that brought them up to this point now. And he's telling the people, because these are people, the younger ones who didn't go through this, you know, they were the ones who had faith for God and their older generation, and they all died in the wilderness over the last uh, 40 years. So Moses is remembering the journey that they, uh, uh, had during that particular time. So one through two, God commands Israel to attack Bashan. Now, as Israel continued closer to the promised land, moving westward towards the Jordan, they passed through the land of Og, king of Bashan. Uh, this brought uh, Israel even 
uh, more territory to occupy on the east side of the Jordan River. And it showed them that they could, through the power of God, overcome the mighty enemy they would confront on the western side of uh, the Jordan River. Because God said, don't be afraid. I am going to be with you with you. I've given this to you. So by God giving them this uh, win in battle, said, look, you're not going to have no problem when you go across uh, Jordan and possess the promised land. Now, apparently, Og was the last of the uh, uh, of the Riffums in his land on the east side of the Jordan. And it talks about, you know, how big his bed was. It said it was made of iron. And, 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 and when it gave the dimensions in our uh, language, where they're saying it was 14 feet by six feet in our language. Now let's move on to 12 through 17, where uh, Moses remembers the tribe that settled on the east side of the Jordan, which of course is the tribe of Reuben, the tribe of uh, Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh. Uh, these two and a half tribes decided that the land on the east side of the Jordan was good enough for them, and, and the Lord allowed it if they would fulfill the obligation mentioned in the next verses where it tells them, you will go over and you will be with your brothering and you can leave your wife and children all over here, your livestock, but you will not be able to return until they're able to possess their land and they agreed uh, to this. Verses 21 through 22 uh, talks about Moses encouraging uh, Joshua. And of course, Moses remembering the appointment of Joshua at this particular time as well. Joshua had a huge job to do and to bring a whole nation into a land where they would not be welcome and where they would have to fight to possess what God had rightly given to them. Now, but Moses told you, you told Joshua, look, you don't need to fear. God is going to be with you. And Joshua knew how God worked because Joshua was, was with Moses and them all the time through all the victories that they had. With this huge challenge in front of him, Joshua is encouraged to remember this, that all that the Lord your God has done to these two kings, and those are the mighty kings, talking about Shion and all, remembers God's past faithfulness, of course, was the key to present and future victories. And that's what our lives as well. God has brought us through. If God has brought us through before, God will bring us through again. Verses 20 through 29 talks about Moses remembering his plea uh, to enter the promised land with the Lord. Uh, he pleaded, he said, let me cross and go over. Now Moses knew God was right in mercy and forgiveness. He knew there was no harm in asking God to relent from his previous judgment that Moses would not see the promised land. And we can appreciate what a painful thing this was for Moses. He had lived, what, his first 40 years of his life uh, 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 confident in his own ability to deliver uh, Israel. He spent his next 40 years of his life having the Confidence demolished as he tended his uh, father-in-law's sheep. Then he spent his last 40 years of his life being used of God to do what he was called to do. Now, he was not allowed to see the end results. No wonder Moses was pleading with God. 120 years, my God. But God told him enough of that. Speak no more to me. God did not want to hear Moses appeal on this matter because of his sin at, at Meribah. You can read that in Numbers chapter 20, where he misrepresented God as being angry with Israel uh, when he was not. Moses could not enter the promised land. That was his, 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 his punishment. This may seem like an extremely harsh punishment for Moses, it seems that after only one step up, 
he then had to die short of the promised land. But see, Moses was being judged by a stricter standard because of his leadership position with the nation and because he had an ultimately close relationship with God. It is right for teachers and leaders to be judged by a stricter standard, though it is unrighteous now to hold teachers and leaders to a perfect standard because they're not perfect either. It is true the people conduct conduct was worse than Moses, but that was not relevant at all. And God told him, look, speak no more. Speak no more to me of this matter. Now, Moses was a great man of intercession, perhaps one of the greatest men in the Bible, yet God would say no, even to Moses in prayer. God would sometimes say no, even to his mightiest intercessors. God told him to go to Pete. This God. This was the place where Moses would be able to, to see the promised land from a distance, and of course, and then die. And of course, this is where the book of, of Deuteronomy would end as well. But God told him, said, go east, west, north, look, you can see it with your own eyes, but you will not be able to look in. And God told him, now encourage Joshua. It was probably easier for, for Moses to have a bad attitude here. Well, if, if, if I'm not going into the land, I'm sure not going to knock myself out training my replacement, he could have said. But, but that was not the heart of Moses. He would do everything he could to, to love the people, to prepare them to go in and to make Joshua a success. A man of God would not do it any other way. A woman of God would not do it any other way. That's one of the fruits that you would be able to see if they were not acting in that manner. Moses had the heart of a true shepherd. He knew that his ministry was not centered on himself and his own satisfaction but on God and God's people. Praise God, that is Deuteronomy, amen. But as you read back over it, pray about it, let God give you uh, more revelation, more understanding, amen. And if you have any questions, amen, of course, you can email us at uh, uh, at Camp Hope AMEC at uh, gmail.com. We'll get those answers for you. Amen. But we thank you for tuning in again with us here on this Wednesday. And thank you for receiving our motto, our, 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 our invitation to come grow with us as we transform our thoughts, our, our words, our, our thoughts, our words, and our deeds. Amen. But we all are preparing for Christ's return, and we want to hear the words, uh, well done, good and faithful servants. Amen. Next Wednesday, amen, we'll be talking about Deuteronomy chapter four. So we ask you, we read over three, amen, if possible, one, two, and three, amen, and go ahead and read in chapter four as and prepare for our study next week. We thank each and every one of you for all the support that you've given us, our virtual members, our covenant members, our local members, our friends, all of those that's tuned in. You have been marvelous. You've allowed God to use you as God's hands, as God's resources, as God's a plan to help us do what we need to do in order that we might fulfill the vision and the mission that God has given us. We cannot thank you enough. So again, tune back in with us again. Know we love you with the love of Christ. And as I always said, the end of every one of our meetings, I'll see you next time.